Welcome back. Just last month, UN AIDS launched its Global AIDS Report in Eshowe in KwaZulu-Natal province of South Africa, an area which has seen the highest HIV infections in the country. The worrying aspect is that new HIV infections remain high, with girls between the ages of 15 to 25 being most affected. According to Statistics South Africa, 85% of South Africans know their status, 71% of those affected are in ARVs. The great news is that 86% of those affected have undetectable virus, meaning they cannot transmit the virus. In this report, we look at the concept of viral load suppression. Nearly 8 million people between the ages of 15 and 35 are living with HIV in South Africa, according to Statistics SA's media report. While hope remains high for a cure soon, there's some hopeful news for viral load suppression, as revealed in a 2018 UNAIDS report, which shows that HIV can be undetectable. 24-year-old Sadie Brown a student of the University of Northwest was born with the virus and is currently living with a suppressed viral load. Even though it was hard for Sadie to start treatment right after finding out her status, seven years later, she's glad she did. It's not easy taking pills every day for the rest of your life, but reaching something like viral suppression, it kind of feels like you are being rewarded because now you can actually see that these pills are actually do, um, doing something in your body. They are helping. They might not be curing you, but you are headed to like the right direction. So it did feel like an achievement. Dr. Larato Masimola, a general practitioner in Johannesburg, explains what a suppressed viral load means. The virus particles in the blood has been suppressed below detectable number. So when the viruses are swimming around in the blood, they count them, that is the viral load, the load of, or the number of viruses in the blood. When they can no longer test, take a tube of blood and test it and find the virus, then we say it's suppressed. And then we say it's also suppressed where you come back for your monitoring and they keep not finding the virus. Regardless of one being HIV undetectable, antiretrovirals, ARVs, need to be taken. Dr. Massimola emphasized the importance of taking ARVs. It's never a good thing to miss treatment or to not take a treatment seriously and assume that oh, I've been taking for three years now, I can take it twice a week. That's not going to have that effect of a steady state where the medication is always available to stop the new viruses that are, are, are multiplying from spreading and, 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 have, and increasing your viral load again. And then you're putting your partner or partners at risk. Among the young, ignorance is still prevalent. Ntlantla Ongwane, 25, is sexually active, but is terrified to know his HIV status. Gwatianum CV says he tests annually on his birthday and precious has some knowledge on HIV and AIDS, and we asked them if they were open to dating people living with the virus. I, can, I cannot as, associate myself with the HIV person because, no, 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 because I still have a long way to live. <laughs> yeah, I think I would. If, if I won't, if there's a chance of me not getting it, then yeah, I think I would. I mean, they, they're healthy if they take their treatment, they're fine and stuff, unless they stop taking it, then AIDS again and stuff, then they become thing. Sadie is quite open about her HIV status, but she says she gets cyberbullied for that and by those who do believe she looks too healthy to be HIV positive. There are people who think I am lying about my status. I still don't understand why they think I would lie. It's just, it's just stupid things because I'm just like, why would I lie? There can always be opportunity to educate and... I don't know how else, because the, the, the materials are there. The radio talks about it all the time. Um, the young people are very big on social media. It's there. People can Google whatever they want, but they won't Google about HIV. I think that's still stigma-driven. People are scared of HIV still. And for as long as we are scared of it, it's still going to then control us. I used to fear infecting my partner with HIV. It used to be one of my biggest fears. I think until I started reading up on viral suppression until I reached it and I understood that actually um, it's not so dark, it's not so bad after all. Sadie's fears are shared by many, but South Africa hopes to reach the UN AIDS 1990-90 target, meaning 90% of people on ARVs will have viral load suppression. 
90% of people living with HIV will know their status, and 90% of HIV-positive people will receive sustained ARVs therapy by 2020. Let's head to Ghana now, where thousands of people have flocked to Accra for the annual Chale Wate Festival. The festival is an exciting mix of graffiti, music, fashion and contemporary performances that reimagine Africa. Take a look. Thousands of people flood Ghana's Port City neighborhood of Jamestown to see what the country's artists have to offer this year at the ninth edition of the Chale Wate Festival. The streets were transformed into a gallery of sorts as everyone from painters, graffiti artists, designers and performing artists display their work in a way that made it accessible to the public. <laughs> Valerie Asimwe Amani, an artist from Tanzania, set up an installation called We Are What We See. And it's basically about how we perceive ourselves as Africans and how the media and what we've been fed through um, history has made us feel about ourselves and basically I wanted to create images that presented the African as, as a higher being, as a spiritual being, as capable of doing more, as almost a godlike figure. Abraham Tete, also known as Kobe 116, a Ghanaian portrait artist who works with pencil and paper, says Chalewate is an opportunity for artists to become visible. I did this work Three years ago, that was 2016, and I titled it Out of the Struggle. The inspiration behind this work is so emotional, anytime I want to talk about it. You know, there are a lot of people with talents and gifts out there. They have nobody to, I mean, put them out there or bring them to the limelight. Chale Water, which means Man, let's go, in the local Ga language, aims to bring more people in contact with different forms of art by breaking creative boundaries and rejuvenating public spaces. So far, the experience has been very exciting. There are lots of different things to see, lots of art, performances, so many colors and um, so much food, yeah. Chalet Water, first held in 2011, and has been credited with building a reputation for Accra as a cultural hub in West Africa. Well, that's the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Teniola Shubwale. Bye for now.